Okay, so when you go in, you're going to do new project or open project, depending on what you want to work on. I just am starting on a whole new project here. So it automatically brings this up when you start a new project. But if you want to change it, you can go to Map Properties by coming down under here and um, right-clicking the map that you want to change. Go to Map Properties, and you can rename your map. You can um, change what type type of thing you want it to be. So if I want it to be a castle, I can be a castle, snow village. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, woods. Let's go with woods today. I'm going to say okay. And if you want, then you can add trees and such. I am not going to go over um, a lot of making the maps themselves. And if you want me to, you can comment below or email me and I will work on that for you. But because I'm getting the feel that doing this faster is probably something you guys all want, I'm going to do that. But just to briefly go over, you have different layers. Your first layer is usually like the grass. And you can also use stuff called um, auto tiles. Whoops, I forgot to take it off the bucket. The pencil lets you draw. So if I wanted to put water here, this is an auto tile that's right up here. So there's my water. And you can also put a path. So let's put a little path down here. There, there's my path. And then you can go to your second layer and you could put like a tree. And your third layer is usually the layer you put things like doors or um, trying to think what else. Doors, holes in the wall or holes in a tree. Um, things like that. That would go in your last layer. And then your events are going to be the, the main thing that you'll be using to orchestrate this game. This, this S is, stands for starter position. This is where your character is going to spawn. So for right now, we'll go ahead and put our starter right there. He's going to start right here. And we're going to go up here, and I'm going to show you who you're going to be starting as. So go up to database, and you are going to start as this guy number one, the number one actor. But you can change your care, you can change his name, you can change his class, so he's a fighter or a lancer or a warrior. If you want to get fancy, you can make your own classes here. Same thing with skills, everything is customizable up here. So if you want to change your character the way they look, let's say, I'm going to make mine look like this guy, sure. And then you can find the battle graphic of that person. Which number was this? Cleric 2. I'll go with Cleric 2 and that 2. There. So you can change him however you like by double clicking. Yes, I've had many people already ask me, how do I make my own character? That is a subject for another day. It is a little bit more complicated. If you must learn it right now, you can find YouTube tutorials out there. But I'm more concerned about making this game first. And then the other thing that you can do is we are going to just say that we want to just start with this character and not all these other guys. Because right now it's uh, RPG Maker XP lets you play four characters at a time. Those are your party members. Those four, probably the first four it's set as right now. We're just going to start with our first actor and then we'll add actors as we go through it. So if you go to System, and up in the left corner, you're going to see something that says initial party. Those are the people we're starting with. We're going to delete these other three that are under Alexis. So we'll delete this person, this person, and this person. And we're going to say, OK. So let's st for starting our game, what is this going to look like? OK. So we should probably have a character here for when he first comes that explains why he's here and what he's doing, right? That's usually how a game starts. So we'll go ahead and while you're in the events, double click anywhere that you want this character to appear. Choose a character, whoever you want it to be. We'll do this lady. Okay. And 
we're going to put this on auto run. And so that when this game starts, this automatically runs. So we're going to have, we will have this guy say, show text. So I double clicked in this event command box here. And we're going to say show text, which is number one, the tab number one. He's going to say, hello. You can write whatever you want. Welcome. Okay. And then the next thing he's going to say is, I need your help finding the crystals. Double click, text, go find it. Okay? That's all I'm going to do. But then, because we're on auto run, that means that when this game first starts off, this is automatically going to happen. You don't have to push any buttons or move. Your character is stuck here for the entire time that this guy is talking. He can't move. But we want to be able to get him moving again, right? Because you need to be able to walk off this board. So what we're going to do is we are going to change the, we're going to think of it as like us turning this switch off, even though this really isn't a switch, but we need to turn this event off. So we're going to click in here and go to event command one. We're going to control self switch. We're going to say self switch A, which is already selected and OK. So it should say control self switch A is on. Then up here, it's going to say new event page. We're going to click that. Now look at this. There's one and two. On the second page, you're going to go down where it says self switch and self switch A is on. When that happens, now when he says these words, control self switch turns on and it changes the page to this one. So now your character will be able to walk around again. We need to change this so that it's the same picture so that he doesn't just disappear because that's what will happen. This girl, yes. Fighter 3. So it needs to be the same picture. Otherwise, when it switches over, either this character will completely disappear or you could have her change into something if you wanted to do that. <laughs> Whatever you like. And now I'm going to keep the trigger on action button. So that means that when my character walks up and hits enter, she will say something. So we're going to go ahead and double click in here again. And she's going to show text and she's going to say, go get them already. Sheesh. Okay. All right. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And then the other thing we're going to do is you're going to um, go in here. We're going to insert it in here because that will make it more sense. Make more sense. Okay, so right before control self switch, we're going to insert something. You can do this anytime with any of these commands, which is wonderful. This is good that I forgot so that you can I can show you it. So control self switch A right above that. We want it to go in. So we're just going to right click on control self switch A command and insert another show text. And he's going to say, hey, what's your name? Or she is. I guess it could be a boy or a girl. And then again, control self switch, insert something above it. And we're at this time we are going to do, if I can remember it, give me a minute, name input processing. There it is. You're going to let your act, your player change the name. So we want to change the name of Alexis and the max amount of characters is how long the name is. We'll say 10. And then we're going to say, okay. 
We're going to leave the self switch because we want to, after he says all this, we still want it to go to the next one. So, okay. Let's, now, if you want to add music to this, you can go into over here where your map is. Go to Map Properties again by um, right clicking. And then go to where it says Auto Change BGM. You're going to click that. And then you can choose your music. If you want to test it, you push play. And then you push OK when you've selected your music. Make sure you push stop before you leave this box or the music is, will just keep playing for all eternity and it will drive you crazy. And it won't stop until you go back in and push stop. Or I think possibly if it completely plays out. I've never waited that long. I just go back in and push stop when I forget. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a random one. We'll do field one so that we have music. And we're going to say OK. Now we need to get to map two. Wait, actually, we need to make our second map first. So, because there's nowhere to transfer them to right now, right? We don't have any more maps over here. So if you go over here to you to whatever you, the name of yours is, and push new map. We're gonna pick desert. Sure, we're gonna go into a desert. And. Go ahead and make this map really quick. We need to go to layer one again. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the map, so bear with me. And we're going to go back to events, go back to our first map, and now we can transfer them to the next one. So pick one of your tiles down at the bottom. That way it's easier. I usually like to make a road so that I know where to go next. You don't have to, though. You can do what you like. So double click. In your list of event commands, you are going to have them transferred. So we're going to go to the second tab, transfer player, and we're going to choose where we're going. We are going to go in the second one here. We'll go right here. And we're going to say OK. And we're going to say OK. And then we have to change our trigger because right now we have it set so that when your character walks here, you'd have to push a button for him to move to the next. We want to make it so he just walks over and he goes on to the next. So you're going to do player touch. So as soon as he touches that, he gets transferred. And we're going to say, okay. I'm going to copy this, which you can do by right clicking, push copy. And we're going to paste it all along here so that no matter which one he goes to, he'll be able to leave. As long as it's on that round auto tile. And then we should be good.